Looking into your IP a whole lot earlier is one of the key pieces. As soon as you knew that you were doing something that was provably different to everybody else by having that IP protection, that was a massive boost. I'm Eldon Tate from Inhibit Coatings. I'm one of the co-founders. We're an antimicrobial coatings company. We make antibacterial and antiviral additives for paints and coatings, and we're using them in high hygiene applications to keep people safe. So places like food processing plants and hospitals to try to stop dangerous contamination from bacteria and viruses. We came up with a unique way of making silver nanocomposites. We have a cool technology where we can take a plastic or a resin and functionalize it with silver nanoparticles. The way that we do it means that we bind the silver to the resin so it never washes out. So these composites stay antibacterial and antiviral for the lifetime of the product. What we've been able to do is scale up that technology and we're now incorporating it into paints and coatings for things like textiles, wall paints for hospitals and also flooring systems for dairy processing plants. We really sort of have three key pieces of IP that we use within our strategy. So we have the patents, which kind of explicitly protect our processes and, and product characteristics. We've got the trademark side of things, which is protecting the brand that we've been developing over the last few years. And then really a, another key piece is trade secrets. So this is other developments that we've been able to have in-house that aren't necessarily protectable from a patent perspective, but we make sure that we're taking steps to protect those internally by controlling that information and really trying to build a strong trade secret around it as well. Having this strong patent for us has gotten us a huge amount of interest from both industry partners, but also with other end users. By building that reputation, we all of a sudden realized that we did actually have a brand. So in order to protect that, we went down the trademark route. When it comes to patents and patent protection, it's really important to make sure that you're protecting that information and you need to keep it confidential right up until you have that formal protection, or otherwise you're at risk of losing priority of that, but also you're risking its novelty as well, which will mean that you don't have the chance to protect that invention in the future. At every single stage of our company's growth, everybody's always looked at what the IP we have and how we are bringing that to market and just how well we're protected. Investors always love to talk about that defensible moat. Part of that is having actual protected IP. For us, that's been patents. If I was thinking about advice that I would have appreciated, looking into your IP a whole lot earlier is one of the key pieces. There were a lot of aspects of our invention that we initially thought were unprotectable, but by getting that advice, we were able to find that we were actually doing something pretty novel and unique. Our immediate next steps are getting our products out there and used at scale. We've been working on some really exciting projects across a couple of really cool industries, medical devices, paints and coatings, and textiles. We really see us being able to include this technology into a wide range of high impact applications, and we really want to focus on that public health aspect.